Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, Darren, I think you're going to be projecting the presentation? Yep, uh, it should be uh, up here right now. Okay, um, as you get that ready, I'll just introduce myself once again. So it, I'm Marianne Capo. I am senior manager, I work on the Chrysler brand, and I do the product planning side of the business. Okay, next slide. <laughs> Everyone can see it? Everyone can hear me okay too? Just to be sure? Okay, wonderful. So um, over the decades, Chrysler brand as the innovator and the originator of the minivan segment, it has evolved to represent innovative family transportation. For more than 35 years, Chrysler has been helping families by delivering vehicles with flexible seating, uh, like our stow and go seating and storage that's so, so popular. Uh, we also have been providing passenger and cargo capacity, a ride comfort to our customers, and we're offering our efficient hybrid powertrain now. Let's go to the next slide. So in November of last year, we hit a huge people mover milestone. FDA has sold more than 15 million minivans since we invented the segment. That's selling twice as many minivans than any other manufacturer. We are also seeing positive results this year in what we know has been a very challenging 2020 to say the least. Our Pacifica sales in the third quarter were up 32% from uh, this third quarter last year. Uh, this sales momentum is even before the new 2021 price to Pacifica begins to arrive to dealerships. Because uh, we're talking about third quarter this year to last year up 32%. So let me say through six minivan generations, SBA has innovated 116 minivan first. We offer features that make life easier for our customers and their families. And we continue to innovate and we are committed to hold our leadership position in the minivan segment. So in February at the Chicago Auto Show, as pictured here, we've revealed our new redesigned 2021 Price of Pacifica. So on stage here in this picture is our CEO, Simpsoniscus, revealing the new redesigned Pacifica, offering the most standard safety features in any vehicle in the industry, together with the most advanced all-wheel drive system in its pack. And I know a few of you, of course, were at the Chicago Auto Show. I remember seeing you there and talking to you. Uh, we also revealed, as we go to the next slide, we revealed at the Chicago Auto, Auto Show our new Pinnacle Top of the Line model you more about that today. And as shown here, the new top of the line pinnacle model features platinum chrome exterior accents and it has the most luxurious interior in its class. It has a sleek and a beautiful design and shown here in a beautiful outdoor setting. Let's go to the next slide. So our team set out to broaden the appeal of the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica with utility style cues while setting a new standard through enhanced design, capability, safety, and technology. So under these four what's, what new, what's new pillars, under design, we made America's family vehicle more athletic than ever, and the interior the most luxurious interior in its class. From a capability standpoint, this is the first time since 2004 that, we're, that we have offered all wheel drive on a minivan and now with stow and go. We also have a safety story, most standard safety features than any other vehicle in the industry. We're gonna tell you all about that. And then we have a technology story uh, as well. Uh, the most technologically advanced minivan in specs, we're featuring the new Uconnect 5 system with a standard 10.1 inch display the largest in its class and also shown in the picture here on the right is our new fam cam interior camera that brian's going to tell you more about as we move along the presentation go to the next slide so here on this slide is more of just a deeper dive i'm not going to talk to you about every one of these elements on this slide this sets up the framework for the remainder of the presentation all you see on this slide all of these features all of these updates we're going to touch upon uh, between myself and Brian. So we're so excited to tell you about our new 2021 Price of Pacifica. Let's go to the next slide and talk about design. So here, this is the new face of the redesigned Pacifica. 
It's going to be more athletic, utility vehicle look, and a feel across the entire Pacifica lineup. So these few highlights are representing what we updated on the new face of the Chrysler Pacifica. Uh, we, all, we put in a new 3D diamond styled upper and lower grille texture. We also added new LED headlamps for a more aggressive look and also adding a new safety uh, standpoint. And it delivers increased light uh, projection and standout appearance. The LED fog lamps um, are new, they're larger. They also convey a more energizing visual appearance and help with the more sporty uh, look. Let's take it to the next slide. Looking at the rear, uh, there is a new LED tail lamp that is more upscale, it's more sporty. The tail lamp now runs the entire width of the Pacifica's rear. It's quite distinctive. You're gonna be able to see it when you're driving down the road. It encapsulates a high gloss housing and it has a backup camera as well that's integrated into a single and simple housing. Okay, next slide. Let's take it into the inside of the Pacifica, which is, the Pacifica always has been the family room on wheels, right? Uh, that's what the minivan's all about. about. So now we have this new elite pinnacle model, it's our premium people mover. And I like to say it's our living room on wheels. It's loaded with luxury features. It includes quilted caramel Napa leather seats in all three rows, second row caps and chairs, matching quilted lumbar comfort support pillow and a suede headliner. It's really beautiful. If we take a look at the next slide, it's gonna show you a closer look. It has a striking caramel and black color scheme. And this is exclusive to the Pinnacle model and it really defines the interior of the Pinnacle. Go to the next slide, you'll see an even closer look. You can see the detail here of the caramel Napa leather seats that are embellished with the quilted side bolsters. Also have the perforated seat inserts. Um, this is on all three rows, gives you a elite premium feel. It also classifies us as the most luxurious interior in its class. Um, in contrast, you have light tungsten stitching uh, that just contrasts uh, with the caramel uh, colored seating. Here is my favorite part of the pinnacle. Super cool, I'm very proud that we added uh, this uh, second row lumbar support pillows. They're unique, they're only found on the pinnacle. Uh, we have them placed in the second row captain's chairs of the pinnacle, but they're removable and any passenger can use this. Uh, the, the pillow itself, uh, the design, shares the same matching quilting, and on the back shares the suede of the suede headliner. Now I like to say, you know, I've driven the Pinnacle, I use this as a driver, it adds comfort uh, when I drive, but I know the kids are gonna love these pillows. Uh, they're either gonna sleep with them, or they're just gonna have more minivan fun. I mean, who doesn't love some pillow fights among your siblings? So let's move on to the next slide. So here we show our new uh, UV-inspired integrated council. We call it the Ultra Council. It's part of the new top-of-the-line pinnacle, and it's the most functional uh, front center council in its class. Take a deeper look. We go to the next slide. This shows all the interior storage that you get with this new council. It has an abundant amount of storage, as you can see represented by the blue shading. Customers ask for covered storage. We're delivering 12.10 liters of covered storage and a total of 13.65 liters of total storage. That's a lot of storage to place all your stuff. We go to the next slide. I'll get a little bit more detail of the um, integrated council. Um, here you can see there's a large pass through underneath. Underneath the council offers more covered storage. Uh, it offers enough room for a purse of my, the purse that I use, which is quite large. It fits under there. Um, and then also you could include, you can include, you can put there uh, your laptop. Uh, it'll, it'll hide it away from, from sight. Also as part of the council, we move to the next slide. Thanks, uh, Darren. Um, go to the next one. 
Um, there's accessibility to the second row passengers. Um, you can see here that second row passengers have cup holders as well as they'll be able to access any stuff that they store in the drawer. Uh, the drawer does travel two and a half inches further than today's super console. Move on to the next slide. To, to close out our interior design story, the Pinnacle model offers best in class total store of storage of 227.6 liters. So that's a lot of storage, but that's enough to store 60 gallons of milk, 4,937 Hot Wheels, if you ever had the need to store that many Hot Wheels, and also 190 Lysol 7.3 ounce containers of disinfecting wipes. And those are the big containers, which unfortunately are ever so popular these days. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it on to Brian, who's gonna to talk to you about our wonderful capability story and our technology. Thanks, Marianne. Uh, Brian Swanson, can you guys hear me good? All right. Um, so I'm gonna I'm here to talk a little bit about the capability and the safety and the tech in the 21 model year Pacifica. The image we're looking at here is some footage that my team shot up at our testing grounds in northern Michigan, up in the Keweenaw Peninsula. And you can see the van is very confident. Um, and handles extremely well in these adverse conditions, probably very similar to what you guys are seeing in Denver. Um, back, and Marianne had mentioned, you gotta go all the way back to 2004, and that's the last time that we had an all-wheel drive system in our minivan. And just about ever since then, we had customers reaching out to us, uh, specifically after we launched our Snow and Go, um, from areas just like Denver, Michigan, Minnesota, all of those, those areas in the uh, continent that experience uh, heavy snow and adverse weather conditions. And they were all giving us the same feedback. They said, hey, I love the van. I love the flexibility. I love the snow and go. I love the fact that one day it can be a people hauler, the next day it can be a pickup truck. But boy, if it doesn't have all wheel drive, it's just a non-starter in a purchase consideration for me. So we listened to those voices and when we initially concepted Pacifica, we gave a specific directive to our packaging engineers. We told them, look guys, you've got to be able to package protect for all wheel drive. But not only do you have to package protect for all wheel drive, you got to make sure that we can maintain stow and go. It is our absolute must have coveted feature for this vehicle. Um, so they ensured through the design and development of our, the initial Pacifica launch that we didn't get any major monuments put in the way uh, that would preclude us from being able to put an all wheel drive system in the van. So, and like you guys know, here at FCA, you know, we put some of the most capable vehicles on the planet with all wheel drive. So we had lots and lots of lessons learned that went into our system um, and lots of great um, validation and durability that provides us with an with a very exceptional system. Let's talk a little bit about the system. So our system uh, is comprised of a power transfer unit up front that splits the torque from our nine speed transmission. It delivers it through a three piece drive shaft that runs the length of the van that connects to a electronically controlled rear drive module. It's a wet clutch setup uh, that delivers torque to the rear wheels. And then we use a brake lock differential to deliver torque to the wheels with the most amount of traction. Our system is completely transparent. So we don't have any switches. There's no buttons or knobs to actuate it. The customer simply gets in the car and drives. And then we use a myriad of what we call triggers to turn the system on and off. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about some of those triggers. Some of them you guys would obviously expect. So if we see that the van is in a, in a uh, weather condition approaching freezing, we're gonna go ahead and turn the system on. But then as you guys know, there's all kinds of sensors and all kinds of communication that travels across the CAN bus on the vehicle that we can utilize to determine when it's appropriate to turn the system on. So we look at things like wheel slip. So obviously if we see wheel slip, we're gonna activate the system. We look at the electronic stability control system. If we see that actuate, we'll go ahead and turn the system on. If the cars, uh, if we sense the cars on a rough road or a steep grade, 
All of those types of triggers, things that the vehicle can tell us, we use uh, to actuate our system. But not only that, we look at what the customer can tell us. And some of you guys might say, well, how do you do that? Um, well, it's very interesting, but if you, can, if you can think about it for a moment, I'll give you guys a couple of examples. If we see significant steering input into the vehicle at higher rates of speed, we'll perhaps assume the customer is making uh, the, uh, an avoidance maneuver. We're going to go ahead and turn the system on. If we see heavy throttle requests, we'll assume the customer is perhaps making a passing maneuver. We're going to go ahead and actuate the system. We want that all wheel drive system to be there for the customer when they need it the most. Um, heck, we even look at the um, we even look at the windshield wipers. If the customer turns the windshield wipers on, we'll go ahead and activate our system. We'll, we want that system there, and we'll assume that that customer is in some adverse weather conditions. Um, so it's uh, really, really a great, completely transparent, hands-free system, and I can't wait for you guys to get an opportunity uh, to get in and drive it. Uh, go to the next slide, Darren. So let's talk a little bit about powertrain. So this is our, our plug-in hybrid. It's still America's first and only plug-in hybrid minivan. Uh, we'll be offering that as well in 21 model year. It delivers 32 miles of all electric range, 82 MPGE, and has an overall range of 520 miles. So there is no range anxiety at all with our hybrid uh, minivan. Uh, one of the questions that I often feel, and since we've got a good cutaway to kind of explain it, I wanted to take a minute uh, and explain to you guys. We get a lot of questions about stow and go and which applications offer stow and go and which don't. On our hybrid, you can see here just after the driver's seating position, kind of the big blue um, box, that is our high voltage battery. And that is in the exact location where our second row seats would have to stow. So on the hybrid minivan, we do not offer stow and go in the second row, but in the third row, you can stow the seats. So just one of the questions that we that I often get. So I figured this would be a great opportunity just to clarify that. Regular standard stow and go is offered available on all gas applications for Pacifica. Um, one other item to touch on the powertrain. So we are also going to continue to offer our three point, our gas offering will be our 3.6 liter Pentastar engine made it to our nine speed transmission. Um, and that's been our, uh, our powertrain of choice since we launched the vehicle. So next slide, please. Safety. So Marianne touched on uh, safety a little bit. Um, you know, this is kind of a badge of honor for us. We, uh, we have not only the most standard safety features in our segment, but we have the most standard safety features in the industry on Pacifica. It's something that we're really, uh, we're really proud of um, uh, in the engineering side, as well as obviously the brand side, but safety is really paramount to our customers. You know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, it was a nice to have. And nowadays it's, it's like a standard thing that's just expected by all our customers. So you can see a couple of the examples there below, uh, pedestrian automatic emergency braking, uh, adaptive cruise control, lane sense, lane keep, all of those safety features that everybody is expecting, we got them here on Pacifica. And uh, it's really, really a great story for us. Move on to the uh, next slide, Aaron. So let's move into the inside of the vehicle and talk a little bit about technology. One of the big stories for us uh, on 21 model year Pacifica is we're one of the first applications within FCA to introduce the new Uconnect 5 system. And I think some of you guys had the opportunity to get probably a little bit deeper dive not long ago into this Uconnect 5 system, but there's a couple of features that I really wanted to highlight because I think they're key that really are going to make this thing stand out. Um, the first one is the customizable driver profiles. So. I, I like to tell uh, a story. So my, my wife and I have had a minivan in our driveway for almost 18 years. And it's her daily driver, but I get to drive it occasionally. And kind of one of the things uh, that's a pet peeve of mine, if you will, is every time that I go to drive the vehicle, I gotta take like 10 minutes to reacclimate myself with the controls. You know, where are the heated seats at? Uh, 
where, how do I get to the climate control? Just all of those features that are in there, I gotta go through kind of a relearning process. Well, our new Uconnect 5 system, our customizable driver profiles, allows you to actually build those screens. So any of those features in the radio, you can put right on your front page and you can have multiple pages even, but you can put all those features right where you want them. So when you jump in the car, it's pages that you built, you put them right there, you know exactly where everything is, you can just jump in and go. Um, and obviously that includes radio presets and all of those other things. So it's a really, really awesome feature. Um, and uh, when you guys get an opportunity to get inside one of our 21 mile year Pacificas, by all means, check that out. I think you're gonna find it's a, uh, it's a great thing. Um, included in Uconnect 5, so we're bringing all Alexa, um, all the Alexa capabilities that you have at home. So all those Alexa skills are now available in the van. Um, and even if you have Alexa enabled devices in your home, uh, you're able to lock and unlock the vehicle as well as start the vehicle from the comfort of your home, which is actually uh, really, really cool. The, uh, the amount of connectivity on the van um, and how things are progressing through this uh, uh, wave of new technology uh, is really, really great. Um, let's go to the next slide, Darren. Um, so we talked a little bit about a couple of features. There's a few more I wanted to touch on, but our Uconnect 5 system is five times faster. Um, we do have Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay available on that. Um, the um, screen resolution is three times greater um, and it is 4G um, connected. So, you know, a lot of these uh, new technologies obviously flowing into uh, into our 21 mile year Pacifica. Here's a really cool feature that when you guys get a chance to get in the car, and I wish I had a car, I wish we were standing around some cars so I could really demo it for you. Um, this one is really neat. So we're not the first in the segment to do something like this, but this is what we call our fam cam. But we do have some really unique features about our offering. Uh, as you can see here, this allows the driver to pull up kind of a bird's eye view, if you will, of the second and third row of the inside of the vehicle. And the one thing that's really unique about our system is you can see into a rear facing infant seat. So if you look at the image on the right side of your screen, you can see um, two rear facing infant seats and uh, two young children, one of our designers children posted, uh, posed for these images. Um, but what's really cool is that screen on the right, you can see all the seating positions. If you take your finger and you select the seating position you want, it'll give you that zoomed in image on the right. And as you can see, that allows you to see a rear facing infant seat. So I know when I was a, when I was a young father and putting those rear facing seats in a car, I always was kind of wondering, you know, what's going on with them back there? Is everything all right? Is he sleeping? Is he awake? Not the, the mystery is solved now. You can actually simply pull this up, go to the, the fan cam screen, select the seating position you want to see, and you can see exactly what's going on in the back of the vehicle. It's really, really a great feature. On the bottom left corner, you can see it's also um, active at night. It goes to more of an infrared image, and that's what you see in that kind of uh, black and white image on the bottom left corner. So that's kind of the nighttime view that you'll get with a fan cam. All right, 21 model year, we're also including wireless charging. So you can see there on um, the phone, kind of what's neat about that, you see the the, uh, the word push above it. So it's actually covered storage. So if you push in on that, it'll slide and cover your phone up. So you can have the security to know that uh, you can go ahead and leave that phone in that area and uh, it won't just be sitting out in the open for other folks to see. We offer that wireless charging pad on um, both our premium and our um, super console. So <clears throat> onto our, um, onto our uh, rear theater. So we're bringing four new games into our, uh, our rear theater offering, Concentration, Chess, Chrysler Says, and Backgammon. Those get added to the nine games that we already have. So if you have uh, passengers that don't have their own entertainment on their phones, uh, we provide uh, those games uh, for added enjoyment for those uh, customers. Uh, we also have a new 10 inch uh, rear quarter subwoofer that's mounted in the back left uh, corner of the vehicle. 
Uh, also uh, available with our uh, stowing back system. So we still continue to offer the stowing back system. And then let's talk a little bit about USB. So our van is extremely connected. So we're gonna be the first in the segment to offer the USB type C port. And that's gonna allow our customers to charge their devices four times faster than before. Um, and it nearly doubles the available USB ports uh, in the current model. So I think uh, we have up to 12 now that you can get uh, in uh, the Pacifica models. So lots of connectivity, lots of ways to get connected. Um, there's no lack of connectivity or connectivity ports in the vehicle. And finally, I wanted to uh, wanted to talk just briefly um, to uh, give perhaps a uh, tip of the hat to our body engineering guys. So when we went through our initial 21 model year Pacifica um, idea generation, we, we defined a, a desire to make an even quiet Pacifica even quieter. So we went after wind noise, road noise, powertrain noise. Um, we added some additional content. So we put acoustic front side glass in the limited and pinnacle models. Uh, as well as acoustic windshields in all Pacificas, as well as thicker sliding door glass in all in the um, all Pacifica models as well, and that really um, provides a six to eight percent improvement in speech intelligibility in the cabin of the vehicle. And a lot of people say, "Well, what does that really mean?" What it really boils down to. Uh, the 21 model year Pacifica is going to be the quietest minivan we ever built. So it's one of the things we're really proud of on the engineering side. We know that our customers are going to recognize this. It's going to allow them to enjoy all those new Uconnect 5 features as well as the Uconnect theater. Uh, and so again, when you guys get an opportunity to, uh, to get in the van, make sure you take note of, uh, of that uh, great NVH performance. So. With that, I think, Darren, I'm going to turn it back over to Marianne to go through the product lineup and pricing. Okay, I'm back. Uh, everyone can hear me? Just make sure we'll do a test? Yep. All right. No okay, Darren, you're on my fly. Awesome. So just so you know, we opened up for orders in September. We started production in mid-November, and vehicles are now on their way to dealerships. So we offer a full minivan lineup for families start with the Chrysler Voyager that is not shown on this slide but if I may for a moment let me tell you uh, the Chrysler Voyager is our entry level minivan for the low end of the market for family customers and for our fleet customers as well it starts at about 27,000 and goes to about $33,000 uh, the Voyager will continue to have the same appearance uh, of the 2020 model it does not get the redesign we just looked at. Uh, that is only for Pacifica, and hence this will further differentiate the Pacifica from the Voyager. So talking about Pacifica, which is shown on the slide, our core model lineup is the Touring, Touring L, Limited, and Pinnacle. And when it delivers a range of options to suit any family, we have our gas front wheel drive, our gas all wheel drive, in our hybrid front-wheel drive configuration. Uh, each of these columns represents those configurations. So we start with a gas front-wheel drive configuration on a uh, Touring. That's about $35,000 starting MSRP. Our uh, customers can add all-wheel drive capability for $2,995 step. That includes the all-wheel drive system itself, but it also includes an upgrade to 18-inch wheels from the standard 17-inch wheels. And then the Pacifica Touring has the hybrid front-wheel drive uh, configuration, and that starts at $39,995. That's the same pricing as 20 model year. Uh, and it does not include the potential uh, for the $7,500 federal tax credit or any state or local credits that may apply that customers can uh, put on their tax returns and make the pr value proposition even more compelling. So let me tell you, the Touring itself is packed with standard 
uh, safety features. It gets the redesign because that's across the whole lineup. It includes the 97 standard safety features we've been talking to you about. So it has the new pedestrian automatic emergency braking, standard adaptive cruise control, all of the safety suite. Um, it also has our U Connect 5 system with that 10.1 inch display. That's the largest in its class. And it'll have our class exclusive, exclusive show and go seating that our customers will love. Um, we move on to the Touring L. Uh, it starts with the gas front wheel drive. That starts at about $38,000. Again, it has the same all wheel drive stuff of $2,995. Uh, and that price and for all wheel drive is about $41,000. Uh, hybrid starts at $42,300. So a touring L adds from a touring, you're gonna get your leather seats. That's what the L stands for. You also get like heated front row seats, heated leather, leather steering wheel, and then other features. Then we move on to the limited. Um, and this is um, equipped, this starts with uh, the hybrid powertrain, I'm gonna say. It's $45,800 MSRP. Um, you can step up then to all-wheel drive for about $2,500 from there, and that's a, a price of $48,400 MSRP. So a limited adds even more features. You get standard 18-inch wheels. You're going to get Napa leather trim seats. They're ventilated. They're heated. You're going to have the hands-free sliding doors and lift gates, and a lot of other features. I won't name them all because we'll be here all day. And then last but not least, of course, is our pinnacle uh, at the top of the line up there, because it's the new top of the line. This is for families seeking luxurious living room on wheels. It's gonna have all the premium and class exclusive appearance. Starts at about $51,000 when you're equipped with your hybrid powertrain, and it goes to $53,000 when you add the all-wheel drive. So pinnacle is just fully loaded with all that you could get. Um, out of Pacifica. So of course it has that beautiful interior that I showed you in all those images with that caramel and black interior with the quilting, uh, with the new consoles, uh, but as well, it brings in other safety features like a 360 degree camera. I think you get the parallel and perpendicular park assist. And then you get that new fan cam, uh, interior camera is standard and new connect theater is standard. So we'll go to the next slide and we're going to wrap it up. Uh, so the Chrysler brand is the people mover brand. I like to say it's transportation for the modern family. Our 2021 redesigned Chrysler Pacifica continues to innovate. It is the first and the only plug-in hybrid minivan. It's the most capable all-wheel drive minivan with stow and go. And we have the most standard safety features in the industry, the most technologically advanced minivan in its class. And last but not least, with our new redesign, we're more, more athletic and more stylish as ever before. So uh, with that, so we'll open up to questions. All right, thank you, Marianne and Brian. Uh, looks like we've got some banter going on in our chat box. Um, I think a couple of the questions have been answered. Uh, the Chrysler Pacifica built at the Windsor Assembly Plant in Canada, that's been answered. Um, when are they expected to arrive on dealer lots? And Marianne, I know you had mentioned they're being built right now and starting to ship, is that correct? That is correct. So we've started to ship and the first units should be arriving in the next, I would say by next week. So very soon, days away. Yeah, we're keeping this time late. Uh, Tim asked the ground clearance, is that a concern for customers even with the all wheel drive? I think Brian, you answered that. Yeah, I don't know if there's any additional questions. We raised the van up about 20 millimeters, but that actually maintains about the same ground clearance as all wheel drive. Or front wheel drive, rather. So if anybody, you can either send a question through the chat function, or if you want to turn your mute off, um, you know, just raise your hand and ask questions that way. I like the game idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking note of your game ideas. Thank you guys. Never can have enough games and we're always looking to add and innovate. So <laughs> got it down. Thank you. 
could advertise the other brands in the portfolio, but with a racing game. <laughs> All right, Craig has asked, will the lane keep assist keep the van centered in the lane? So we have a, uh, the intention isn't uh, like a full autopilot, if you will, but we do have a haptic feature that'll provide feedback as you drift out of a lane. So it won't necessarily maintain, but it will give you haptic feedback in the steering wheel. Okay. I think Mary Conway, were you raising your hand for a question? I was. Hi, Kelly. Thanks. I'm sorry I was a couple minutes late. Um, is the fan cam that allows you to see the rear facing seat only on the pinnacle? No, we do offer it in um, an option package on the limited. So um, it's going to be part of the Uconnect Theater family group where we've uh, grouped all the different family type of features. Thank you. You're welcome. And I saw Aaron, you had your hand raised. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, in all-wheel drive system, it sounds like it is the same that's in, uh, say, the Chrysler 300, the Charger, Challenger, etc. Is it basically the same system? It's a, very, it's a very similar system. We do have uh, uh, some unique um, aspects to the system relative to sizing, uh, if you will, for our vehicle, but very similar. Okay. Uh, does the all-wheel drive system change the uh, towing capacity of the van? Because I know it has a light towing capacity for and most people who add, a, add any sort of hitch, they're probably going to be pulling like a camper trailer or skidoos or something. Uh, or just putting racks on to add. But I wonder if the if the all-wheel drive changes anything with that. No, 3,600 pounds is our, is our tow rating. Okay. 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 Uh, so Dave Taylor here, if you ran Android on your car entertainment, backseat system, could you add hundreds of games even when offline? Yeah, I'm not was, sure if I know that answer. Uh, Brian, do you? That's a good one. Right, so that was, that was a statement more than a question. Yeah, I was going to say that. Because I'm like, I don't know. Because <laughs> I have to say, uh, it was, and, and Your I... phone's connected. I, yeah, um, I don't mean to be critical at all, but I was cringing when I was looking at the games you were adding, because kids today have an extremely high level of sophistication, and their expectations of games and graphics are way beyond checkers and backgammon. So, you know, even if you're going to have those, I would at least, you know, encourage you to get some graphic artists to give you really nice 3D renderings of these games. Okay, good suggestion. I'll let you know though. Um, we we added the games, and they're they're more for teenagers and actually adults because adults do sit in the um in the rear of the minivan too. Because most of our other nine existing games were for younger kids. We've been getting requests from customers to have more classic and, and more intellectual type of games. So, of course, that's where the backgammon comes in. Because, you know, your five-year-old is not going to play backgammon. Not likely. That's, you have a, you have a good that's point. point. My uh, eight, ten-year-olds can't reach the screen if they're seat-belted. So, um, the games aren't really for them. They're for like me and you. Well, I'm, I'm sort of short and small, but yeah, I could play backgammon on it because I, I tested it out. No, I saw, I saw Dave's comment and I was kind of chuckling because my when my kids get in and I walk up, to, it's not, it's not our games, right? It's the stuff they have on their phone that that they're always interacting with. But but like I mentioned, you know, that's it's for the person who doesn't have their own device, if you will, right? It's built in, exactly. Yeah. Do we still offer the remote control on the 21 model? I... Oh, oh, absolutely. You still get your remote controls. There's two for each passenger in the rear. And they all know how to work a remote control. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my kids know how to do a lot. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. My kids immediately just plugged into the HDMI with their Chromebooks. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have to, even, didn't have to yeah. even explain anything. They just did it. It's awesome. Thanks. Love hearing that. <laughs> I have a question, if I could, about the uh, weights of the different options. Can anybody give me uh, guesstimates of how much it weighs, how much the Pacifica will weigh?
going from front wheel drive to all wheel drive and then how much does it weigh being a hybrid does it is there a appreciable amount of weight being added front wheel drive to all wheel drive is about 350 pounds and i was just looking at the uh if you give me a second i can i can dig up the uh front drive to, to p has Sure, how about we'll, we'll go to the next question while yeah. you're looking at that, Brian. Yeah. Tim Estrell, are minivan sales growing? I know in the beginning you mentioned Marianne, um, third quarter sales. Yep. So, so yeah, um, honestly, no, minivan sales are not growing, the segment itself. But, of course, um, like I mentioned, our sales have grown um, when you look year over year on third quarter. And um, certainly... Uh, we continue to be the number one selling minivan too. So if I can mention that we've had the number, we've been number one in share and volume of uh, the uh, invented the segment. So we're committed to it. <laughs> okay, Angelia, will power sliding side doors detect if kids stick their hands out while door closing and stop? Sure, if Brian is focused. I went on for Brian. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I, I can answer too. Yeah, um, it will. Um, it will. There is a detection, so um, it will stop. Correct. You're right. I don't know if you want to talk about it more technically, uh, Brian. I'll let you explain it if, yeah, if that's uh, necessary. No, yeah, no, we have pressure sensors in the door for reverse activation. I think that I. Uh speak up here yes go ahead bud. yeah we can hear you you know i uh, i love the pacifica but i've got to ask this i've talked this with kelly a couple times minivan sales are on a they took a dive years ago and they're still diving what what do you project for the next few years uh, have you got to take 50 percent of the market to stay in the business or would you get out of that or? Uh, Dale, I, I hate to tell you this, but projections we're, we can't talk about. So um, um, I can't answer the question. But I think to Mary, the segment, we, yeah. we, are, we are committed to minivan. Um, we're putting so much obviously new into this 2020, 2021 model. That as a company, we are committed to the, the minivan segment. Um, Marianne obviously had talked about that. So while we can't talk about future numbers, we are uh -huh. committed and hoping that you know our loyal customers will continue to follow and, and hopefully bring on some new ones with the all-wheel drive function. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. if I and if I may just add, add though, this segment sure is only a few players, but we all have a, a good piece of the pie, and there's been a good volume for us to to maintain and continue to innovate in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Lots of competition still in that segment. And so it's still a very healthy segment with a lot of competitors. And then, hey, Dale, it's about 650 pounds difference between a front wheel drive and a hybrid. Thanks, Brian. Can I ask just a quick follow up question? Are there any features of this new hybrid system? We're now into the phase of at least a second or third generation uh, <clears throat> hybrid system. Are batteries getting more efficient? are uh the systems that are charging them changing so from the uh from the perspective of the 21 model year van and the new things that we're offering on our hybrid most of uh most of those features are enhancements to the current offerings that we have we do have some improvements in our charge scheduling as well as cabin conditioning um but i think your question was more along the lines of um in general what are we what are we seeing as far as like future and and how the future of electrification is going to flow into the industry, right? Um, I, I'm not sure that there's anything to say to that other than, yeah, obviously we're seeing, you know, it, it's almost like the computer age a few years ago, right? It's exponential growth. So, you know, and as that uh, growth and technology grows, right, you'll see that start to flow into vehicles. I think it's probably, you know, a very general answer to your question. I wish I could be more specific, but uh, 
Um, I think that's about all I can tell you. Thank you. Okay, I think again, Dave Taylor, were you raising your hand? Oops. Yes, I was. Um, I actually typed the question in the chat too, but my question is, if minivan sales are flat or are slowly just, um, slowing down, what's taking those sales? What What is the alternative vehicle format that people are opting for instead of a minivan? Having had a number of minivans when my children were smaller. Uh, so certainly um, the industry has moved to UVs. Um, I'm not gonna deny that. And actually that's some of the reasons on what we, that it, why we um, made the updates on the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica, adding all wheel drive. That's UV like bringing that back. Um, adding the more you like the like uh, exterior appearance, the UV inspired uh, uh, council. So moving in that direction because um, yes, uh, UVs have taken off and you know cars are down, and then uh, you know minivan sales are, are flat. And, we're going to hold we're going to continue to hold our piece though i'm going to mention that again <laughs> i've got a question here about the about the all-wheel drive and the windshield wipers so in, in regarding the windshield wipers is there a delay in the activation of the all-wheel drive so i was kind of wondering what would happen if someone had just wanted to clean the windshield wipers and if that would trigger the all-wheel drive for a split second yeah no we, uh, obviously we have a, a slight delay in the actuation um I believe uh, it's uh, th three or four white patterns. It's beyond the the missing um, segment for clearing. Okay, thank you. Yep. And Tim wants a tricked out version like VW did. <laughs> <laughs> we have the S model, the red S model too. <laughs> that's a bit tripped out. Yeah, that's like our sporty or going to, you know, you want blacked out look. It's so popular. It looks great. And then we added a um, year and a half ago a red uh, red seat. They're like Ferrari hot red. So you look really super red hot in your minivan. It's great. I thought he was going to ask about Thought he was going to ask about the SRT images that have floated around the internet. I, I had a question for that. I was almost going to. <laughs> I was so close. I can get the engineering guys to do it. <laughs> no Hemi. <laughs> I think Lauren has a question. Go ahead, Lauren. Uh, it's not a question, but I just wanted to let you guys know that um, I just bought a brand new truck, a 2020 Ram uh, Laramie, 2500. <laughs> yep. But my kids were so disappointed. They're like, "Mom, I wanted the one with the sliding door and the TV screens." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! How could you disappoint your kids? I know, right? <laughs> oh my gosh! We'll we'll get you into the Pacifica next. <laughs> can we enlist in one with a diesel that can tow my camper and we'll talk about it? I'm going to have to get you two vehicles so you can <laughs> You know, it's funny. I'll say um, I have an 18 year old daughter, and when I was driving the Pacifica about a year ago, her friends would get into the back seat and they loved the games. They played it more than the little kids. I mean, it would occupy them for 40 That's minutes funny, if you're, yeah. you know, heading downtown. Um, I got, you know, just, I was the cool mom. And, you know, usually you're not a cool mom when they're 17. So, <laughs> kudos. All right. Uh, Matt. Matt is asking, considering the always and rapidly changing size of the phones, what phone is benchmarked and how do you future protect the wireless charging feature? Any adaptability? Good question. No, that's a great question. So, um, our Uconnect guys don't pick just one phone. We actually have a list, um, and I wanna say it's around 20 phones that when we go through all of our validation and packaging uh, activities, they use those kind of as their guideline for design. But yeah, keeping up with the phone tech um, is obviously a challenge, right? So getting those inroads to be able to uh, work with those guys to understand what they have coming down the road, right? Enables us to, to be prepared to accommodate their needs as well, so. It's not just a single phone, if you will, that we use to benchmark. 
Okay, Aaron, go ahead. Um, I have a question about take rates or expected take rates uh, between front wheel drive, all wheel drive, and the plug in. So, do you have a, a percentage of sales you expect for each of those? I guess I should take that one. And, and Aaron, I apologize, but I can't share expected or projected take rates. <laughs> so certainly I have an idea because I had to make estimates, but I can't share them. So soon enough, the actuals will be out there and we'll all know uh, where it's all going. Yep. All righty. Uh, Dave, look and see. Oh, uh, ooh, okay, so impressive, nice. <laughs> Uh, I'm just being snarky, but that does bring a, a separate question. Um, since you were talking about um, CarPlay and Android Auto, any chance of wireless CarPlay? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we actually do have wireless CarPlay. Um, I should have mentioned that. Yes, yeah, so uh, that is one of the new improvements in Uconnect 5. So we are uh, completely wireless. So no longer do you have to be tethered to the radio. When, uh, Yay. Yay. When I, yeah, so yeah, now to get that in my car, which sadly yeah. is not an FCA car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a beautiful yeah. thing. You uh, you set it up one time and then you never have to touch it again. It's great. Yeah, it's that's a great benefit because, yeah, who likes that? Who I always forget my core. I mean, it's great. I'm just gonna be able to get in the car and, and drive. So our customers are gonna love that. <clears throat> yeah, what the Uconnect 5 feature, there's so many awesome new features. One thing that I love is I have both a work phone and a personal phone, probably like many people. And now you'll be able to hook both of those up. So before, you know, in the past systems, you could only use one phone and that, and so now both will be connected at all times. That to me is like such a bonus feature. So there's going to be little things, um, you know, five, I think is it five or six user profiles, Brian, as yep. you had mentioned. Yep. So if you have all your presets for your radio stations, heated seats, just more family friendly. Cool. Teenagers, husbands, wives, that whoever, you know, grandma. <laughs> hey, Kelly. Yeah. I got to jump off because I've got another meeting to go to. I just want to tell you thanks from the Thank group. You. And Merry Christmas to everybody and hope that you all do well. Have a great Christmas season. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Happy holidays. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Thanks. And we will start to wrap it up. I don't know if there's any last minute question or not. And then um, I know I did have one question, if I could, Kelly. Sorry, I just wanted to ask uh, what FCA looks at as far as the 2021 Pacifica. Is this a mid model upgrade? Is it it's it's not a full on redesign of the platform, but how how do you look at it when you do as many significant changes uh, to a platform as you've done to the Pacifica? You want me to so, take that, Marianne, or you want oh, to take that? Sure. I'm starting, so, and if I want to add, I'll add. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, absolutely. So uh, 21 for us is what we call a, a major mid-cycle action. So basically, um, when you have a major mid-cycle, um, you'll see front and rear face shows, front front and rear headlamp tail lamp packages um but the kind of the base architecture is maintained right on a, on a major new program right all of that stuff changes significantly so this this for us is what we would consider like a major mid-cycle action great thank you because you're right we did do a ton i mean we we did do a ton and we're really happy the team did a great job All righty, any last questions? I've just got one more. Uh, when trying to calibrate the all-wheel drive system during testing, was there ever a drift competition between the, the test drivers when driving on slippery surfaces? <laughs> 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 or, or more seriously, what, what kind of things did the engineering guys do when working to calibrate the all-wheel drive system for the Pacifica? So uh, th that's a very good question. So we have um, a very strict um, a design validation plan that requires the vehicle to be able to go through various um, different obstacles, maneuvers, uh, you know, so obviously you saw some of the images in that early on video. So we have requirements on the slalom. We have um, the requirements to do snow grade climbs. So all snow, sorry guys, um, 
So a completely uh, snow covered grade, we have a requirement uh, to be able to climb that. We have what they call a split mu grade, which is concrete, dry concrete or brushed on one side and then ice on the other. So you have half the car on a low mu surface and the other half on a high. And the system has to be able to manage that. So lot, there's lots and lots of different um, conditions, different tests, different things that we do um, from all of the lessons learned from our other all wheel drive applications that we make sure that all of our vehicles go through. So unfortunately due to the proprietariness of the of the testing and all of that good stuff. I can't go into the exact details with you, but there's there's lots and lots of different things. Well, I would like to see Melissa and Brooke bring back their all-wheel drive event so we can really put Pacifica to test on the ice. <laughs> I like this plan. I think it would be great for everybody involved, but most importantly for Pacifica, right? So oh. maybe 2022 at least? Love it. Yeah, you know, 2021, but we're adapting 2022. We can't wait to have you guys there. It'll be a great view. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys all for joining. Hey, hey, everyone. So we are at the end of, well, we've just finished the pre presentation for the 2021 Chrysler Pacifica. So now let's do the notes and some of my questions. So one of the notes was last year, FCA sold 15 million minivans. They sold twice as many minivans as any other automaker or any other manufacturer, which is not really important specifically to the Pacifica. So let's move on to something that is. Chrysler has added their own version of the Honda Odyssey fam cam. And the fam cam in the Odyssey, it was basically just an interior cam system that allow, that allowed the driver and, the, and arguably the passenger to look into the look into the infotainment system and have a camera set up so they could see the second row and the third row, kind of keep an eye on everyone, an eye on the kids. And so Chrysler has added their own, their own version of that, which I think is a brilliant idea. Perforated seats are on all three rows in the pinnacle trim level. So if you want those nice perforated seats, well, for all three rows, mind you, then you have to go for the pinnacle trim level, which is the highest trim level. The new integrated console has a total storage volume of 13 and a bit liters, which is quite big actually. It looked big if I remember correctly when I was watching the presentation, it looked pretty massive. Because of where the battery pack is, where the battery pack is located in the Pacifica Hybrid, unfortunately you can't get stow and go in the second row seats. Given that there's nothing blocking the third row seats though, you can still get stow and go for the third row seats in the Pacifica Hybrid. The 2021 Pacifica does get Uconnect 5, so for those who want the new Uconnect 5 system, the 2021 Pacifica does get that. The fam cam can zoom in on a seat, so if you want to see what one individual child is doing, then you can do that. The Voyager will continue to use the old fascia, so the, the 2020 Chrysler Pacifica fascias will continue on the Voyager. This is meant to differentiate the Pacifica from its cheaper alternative. The limited and pinnacle trim levels apparently only come with all-wheel drive. The Touring and Touring L come with either front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. So, that's that's an interesting difference between... That's an interesting difference from the old Pacific. I mean, the old Pacifica didn't have all-wheel drive, but it's a little bit strange to me that the limited and p pinnacle trim levels only come with all wheel drive. I would think that having a front wheel drive and all wheel drive, having those two, having the all wheel drive as an option would be better for those who want the pinnacle trim level but want a little bit more fuel efficiency and certainly want the stow and go. So that's, to me, that's a little bit of a strange option. Perhaps we'll see front wheel drive come to pinnacle and limited 2022 model year, 2023 model year, you know, somewhere down the line. But I would hope that they do that. The Pinnacle Hybrid does also come in Pinnacle trim level, as evidenced right there. So for those wondering about the ground level of the all-wheel drive to the front-wheel drive and whether it actually makes a difference, the ground clearance of the all-wheel drive Pacifica is actually the same as the front-wheel drive. The caveat, though, is that they raise the normal, the normal front-wheel drive Pacifica up about 20 millimeters so that it's in line with the all-wheel drive. So it's not so much that the all-wheel drive Pacifica has the same ride height as the front-wheel drive one, but that the front wheel drive models have been raised to meet the ride height of the all wheel drive. So it's more accurate to say that the front wheel drive models now have the same ride height as the all wheel drive model. So as I, as I say in this note, so technically speaking, the all wheel drive Pacifica was about 20 millimeter higher than the front wheel drive one before they also raised the front wheel drive models to, to that level as well. The fam cam is not only an option on the pinnacle model, it, it's also an option on the limited as well. 
The all-wheel drive system in the Pacifica is similar to the one in the 300 Charger and the Challenger. So if you were wondering, it's a, re it's a relatively similar system. The biggest difference though being the size of the components due to the length and size of the minivan. The tow rating of the Pacifica doesn't change with all-wheel drive, which its towing rating is 3,600 pounds. The front-wheel drive Pacifica gains 300 pounds when all-wheel drive is added. There is a 650-pound difference, though, between a front-wheel drive and potentially all-wheel drive Pacifica and a hybrid model. So it's probably more of a 350-pound difference between an all-wheel drive Pacifica and the hybrid model, and it's a 650-pound difference between the front-wheel drive and the hybrid model, thanks to the batteries. Then I had a question regarding one of the systems, and this was regarding the windshield wipers. For the windshield wipers, is there a delay in the activation of the all-wheel drive? Because they were saying during the meeting, as you saw, that the all-wheel drive will be automatically engaged once the windshield wipers have been activated. And so I was, I was asking this because that seemed like it, it could be a little bit aggressive, like overzealous with its activation. So, as I said in this note, what if someone just has to clean the windshield and blips the wipers? Will the all-wheel drive come on for a brief second and come on again? Or does the system know to turn on the all-wheel drive after prolonged wiper usage? The answer was there is a slight delay in the activation of the all-wheel drive. So there's more than one pattern that will activate the all-wheel drive trigger. So if you have to clean bird poop off the windshield and need to blip the wipers, you shouldn't activate the all-wheel drive and briefly use extra fuel. So that's quite handy. And then my, I think the last question I got answered here, yep, was when trying to calibrate the all-wheel drive system during testing, was there ever a drift, this was funny, this was more messing with them, was there ever a drift competition between the test drivers when driving in slippery conditions? My more serious question was what kinds of what what kind of testing did the engineering guys do when working to calibrate the all-wheel drive Pacifica? I didn't get a specific answer, but the answer in short was a lot of testing. That overall is going to be it for this video, though. I I like some of the quite a lot of, actually of the innovations on the new Pacifica. I I still find that a little bit of a strange decision to make the Limited and Pinnacle only available in all-wheel drive, because hey, you sacrifice the stow and go, and the Pinnacle with stow and go I think would be pretty sick, but. You know, it is what it is. Once again, hopefully, maybe in the 2022 model year, 2023 model year, they'll say, you know what, that might have been a bit of a mistake. You can get front-wheel drive with the Pinnacle models now. But the fam cam, I think, is a brilliant idea. It's interesting that they raised the front-wheel drive to meet the ride height of the all-wheel drive model. A little, perhaps unnecessary, but it's, you know, it's only 20 millimeters, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, then please like the, like the video, share the video, and subscribe, and consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, I appreciate that. Don't forget to hit the little notification bell, and then all notifications. That way, obviously, you're notified every time I upload. I'll see you all soon.